happy almost weekend, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today for our jam happy hour and very excited to introduce Terry family to everybody watching today. How are we doing, guys? Pretty good doing on this right. rainy day. I know. It's, uh, it's, it's a little gloomy, but I think uh, the three of you can pep us all up and get us all ready to go while we enter the weekend and uh, very excited to hear what you have to offer today. All right, let me introduce the band and some other people. Um, Graham Terry is on guitar today and fiddle, and he's a multi-instrumentalist. Clark on Terry on mandolin. And these guys are masked up today because we're not a COVID pod. Um, so they won't be singing, unfortunately, and I like having that, you know, harmonies in the background, so it's just me. <coughs> but that's... Just the way it goes. And I wanted to introduce some other people. We have a bassist, Rob um, Wright, and he's not here today because we can't fit him in here with this massive bass that he has, and we miss him a lot. Um, and then we have the extended Terry family, East Coast Terry family, my son James, my oldest son, and his wife Sarah, who's <clears throat> a great singer. And, um, and my grandchildren, Rowan, who one is Rowan, who's nine, and says he plays seven instruments, and I know of at least five. <laughs> and, um, and Maeve, who's six, and she's, uh, she plays the piano and um, the ukulele and a pretty mean kazoo. So wow. that's, that's the Terry family band. And the recorder. Oh, okay, and so, so Maeve's up to four. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to the extended Terry family on the East Coast. And um, you said it was, was it Rob or Bob Wright? Who would have been on base? Rob Wright. Robert Rob Wright. Yeah. Well, cheers to everybody who couldn't make it in person. Um, and I'm just very excited to hear what you've got for us. And uh, I think you're going to intro what you've uh, released in the, the most recent few months, right? Yes. Well, you released an album in um, early December. December 10th, December 10th, 10th about, I yeah. think. Woo. And um, called Hometown tragedy is just the kind of thing people hear that and they just really want to listen to it during a pandemic but they seem to like it <laughs> i think it gives a you know a, an ability for everybody listening and um tuning in to the music to really understand that they aren't alone um in whatever um the the loneliest of times or the most difficult of times um that really is the most important force that I think music provides is the ability to feel like you're not alone, even in this very lonely time that we're in. Well, that's so. a good way of looking at it. And as you pointed out in our pre-show discussion, um, a, a tragedy has a lot of lessons to it and it's really about life. And so it's those lessons that we take forward to enrich our lives in the future. So I really look at the, at the album as about life and enhancing life. And hope. <laughs> well, cheers. It's All right. celebration should, of life day, so I'm excited get started? to, to hear. Uh, okay, Let's so do. Hometown Tragedies actually revolves around um, hometowns, not surprisingly. And, um, and so with each song that we do today, with the exception of one, which is the last one, I will, um, I'll talk about that hometown a little bit, or at least mention it. And the first one, Common Ground, the hometown is um, Washington, D.C., because the inspiration for it was the story of Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary, who had a, um, who were living in the White House at the time in 1862, and they lost their son Willie to um, to typhus, and um, it was from that, and he went into tremendous despair and depression over it, as, as did his wife. But he was able to rebound from that at a time when the country, of course, was completely torn apart as well, and um, and came up with a vision involving um, finding common ground between the North and the South. And if you think um, finding common ground is difficult just between two people, imagine what it's like between the North and the South during the Civil War. So that was the inspiration. Common ground. The house that we live in where our children were born the names that we give them and the lives that we forge. The dreams of our father in that old chest we found. And I'm just looking for common ground. 
the land that we stand upon, our country, this earth. The soil that we're dying for is mine and it's yours. The dreams of our father in that old chest to be found. And I'm just looking for common ground. When Lincoln lost, will we be reft and forlorn? His country in tatters, the union so torn. He fell to his knees and prayed to the Lord. Out beyond the wrong side and the side of right. everybody tuned in today and uh happy friday we've made it somehow uh, quite the... quite a quite a tumultuous two weeks <laughs> so i just wanted to start with the washington dc uh, hometown just to sort of put things in perspective and that bit. song is common ground that everyone just listened to um where can they find that for purchase and download and uh, maybe if you have a physical copy of said song on well, an album? Well, we have a Bandcamp site, and Bandcamp, at that site, you can order the digital version as well as a physical CD. Do you have one there? And so it's kind of cool. Here's the physical CD, and, um, and the cover is a painting by my wife of our garden in the back. So anyway, and it's dedicated to her. So there you go. Amazing. Shout out to Debbie. Right. I want to cheers her. Um, Cheer. Cheers. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, all the all the streaming places. You can find awesome. us Awesome. Yep. And okay, so common ground. You were giving a little bit of the backstory um, in regards to the, um, I guess, inspiration for that song, and it had to do with Abe, Honest Abe, Abe Lincoln, and his wife, um, and. So with that being said, why did and what did Abraham Lincoln say when he was accused of stealing a penny? 
What do you think, Jim? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I told Jim, so um, actually, okay, so let's back it up. So this day in history, 1929, that's when the new dry bill was introduced to Congress um, in regard to the American prohibition. And it sounds like Jim is participating in dry January. Is that, is that oh, correct? Thanks for leading me into it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were a great straight person. I totally blew it. Yeah, dry no. January. It's disgusting to even say that on a on this no, program. But it's I, I honestly I I'm very much giving you credit right now because that is that's a a hard thing to do. But yeah, um, it's been challenging this month. Especially to, after to do 2020. That. Yeah. Are you really drinking wine, or you just have some sort of pink colored thing? In no, there? I I am. This is our candy dry rosé. And look, I've got all of our stuff. Right here. And if any of you watching at home need to replenish your wine supply, venture on over to, oh, look, there it is, to the link below, jamsellers.com slash buy. You can uh, locate our wine finder on the site that'll provide you with where you can buy our wines in your local area by typing in your zip code. Uh, we also deliver straight to your doorstep uh, via shipping directly through the website. So you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to get back to the point I was making. So what did Abe Lincoln say when he was accused of stealing a penny? Hey, I'm innocent. Oh, and he is. That's very good. Sam. Thank you. You really so, have a repertoire. <laughs> so, Jim, you're going to have to add that to your uh, tally board of right. uh, drinks you've got to start taking on February 1st. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got song number one under our belt, and I'm, I'm very excited to hear um, the other songs that you've got going for the set list today, and what do we have coming up? The next one is My Birmingham Home. Do you have a little yeah. story behind this song? Sure. I have a little story. I try to keep it short because my kids tell me I talk too much, so I'm <laughs> keeping it short we have, don't have that much time yeah, get on with it now i've got to do the introduction <laughs> to the introduction so at any event um uh, my birmingham home is a story of a of a woman who um goes to visit her hometown and the hometown in this song is birmingham alabama and she's driving from tennessee to birmingham alabama and um and she explores the old neighborhood and all of that kind of stuff to just see what it was like you know how much has changed in 20 years um, but when she's there she she um, realizes that she's really confronting some significant issue in her past um, and that was and you'll find out what that is in the song but the the song um, really is intended to um, to put a focus on our collective conscious in America to be um, and conscience in America to um, confront our past in the arena of um, uh, civil rights and um, racial violence. And you'll see how I get there in the song, I think. Okay. We, we can talk about it after if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> South from my Tennessee house to the pines and the place I was born. Sheltered and warm in the arms of my mom and raised in the ice storm. Tennessee hardwoods from the west to the pines. On the I-65 I rolled down. Pines straight and tall like the walls in the halls of my old house in Bird song and wind in the pines. Dreams come and go in my Birmingham home and the old house that I left behind. The river bend swirls where I first kissed a girl, a peck on her shimmering brow. I 
name all the neighbors who lived on our street. Not one of them is living there now. And there's the old house. It's been 20 years. New paint and shutters and doors. The trembling leaves of the old maple tree seem to wink like they've seen me. Bird song and wind in the pines. Dreams come and go of our Birmingham home and the old house that I left behind. Restless one night, I woke in a fright. Dad held me so tightly, it hurt. I heard the next day, and there were four in the way, all girls, and they died in the church. And I'm awake and torn in the land I was born, where the crosses burn in a rising storm. And the wind was strong, and I heard the bomb. The church was on fire, and the bird song was gone. and Graham. Um, now to everybody who's been tuned in or just now has tuned in, this has been Terry Family and you can find their music and other things at the link posted below. It's going to magically appear in a sec. Ooh. Um, but you have Bandcamp in addition to the major music platforms. Right. right? We have Bandcamp and we have a website. Terry Family Band at, no, what is it? There Terry it is. Terryfamilyband.com. Terryfamilyband.com. Yes. Terryfamilyband.com. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, okay. So I want to. I want to ask you. How has uh, the the past year or so? How has that kind of adjusted or, um, I guess, expanded your creative process between this time last year before the pandemic and um, to now? How has everything changed for you in terms of songwriting and? Um, getting your music, you know, out there for the people to listen to. How has that changed for you? Well, there's two different things there. But the um, um, in terms of getting our music out, we did release the the um, the CD, and we had most of the recording done prior to the pandemic, fortunately. <laughs> so, but then it fell to Graham. Graham produced it, recorded it, mixed it, mastered it, and he did all of that work on all of those songs. Um, you know, during the year in between everything else that he does. So the, the pandemic actually gave us, you know, kind of a little bit of time to work on that and make sure that we, uh, you know, did it right in a way that we liked it. And we're very happy with, with the album for sure. Um, and thank you, Graham, for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Just so many Graham vocals all over it, you know. Just <laughs> really learned how to blend with myself, you know. Yep. <laughs> and um, okay, so of the three of you, who is the best when it comes to way back in the day when karaoke and karaoke bars were a thing? Who do you think is the one that's gonna like step up to the plate and be that like karaoke bar kind of guy connoisseur? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's our older brother James is already a karaoke. Master. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got I got them a karaoke <laughs> machine yeah, for yeah. Christmas that's last true. year. Yeah. Definitely, they would be. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> yes. East Coast Terry's. I, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can honestly say yeah. I've never done karaoke, so I can't be what? a karaoke master. Yeah. And, and there's also Clark. you know imagery of him doing karaoke in Japan. I believe he sang uh, the boxer or something. Yeah, I sang the boxer yeah. in, in Japan on a, on a school bus. 
with a bunch Maybe. of Japanese um, kids. So that's a mega, mega a cred right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm gonna ask the three of you, so if you could ever like sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one chat, even for just an hour, with any producer or musician or anyone really um, in, in the music realm, um, dead or alive, who would you want to sit down and just discuss, whether it be advice that you're seeking from them or just like chatting it out with this person? Who would you want to talk to? Yeah, I got, I got an answer instantly for this. Uh, I've thought about this a lot before. Um, I'd like to hang out with John Batiste, who is uh, the uh, John Batiste of Stay Human, the main guy who does the music for the late show with Stephen Colbert. Yep. I say either him or uh, Corey Wong who's just totally on fire right now. And yeah, they seem, they seem like really good people to get to talk to about music and art and collaboration. I like how yeah. you just like had that like right off the bat. As oh yeah, answer. yeah, 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 I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay. For me, I, for me, I think it's Josh Ritter. I'd want to sit down with him for an hour and <clears throat> talk to him about his, his songwriting process. And um, I mean, then that's, that's that would be a long conversation right there um mm -hmm. and um because uh, i really admire his work for sure okay uh Gr for me uh, i'm clark so okay, oh wait the same i can't okay sorry i can't no see who's talking, talking i thought it was i thought yeah. it was graham talking <laughs> earlier <laughs> yeah 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 uh i i'd probably go with with like people who are considered to be like great a great band leader that's always something i'm interested in is is how do you like how do you get a large group of people, or even a small group of people, to perform mm -hmm. at at their at their best? And people do that in the studio really well. So, you know, uh, like Rick Rubin is has made produced so many amazing albums. Like, how did he get those performances out of those people? Um, that'd be really a fascinating conversation to have. Or someone, I don't know, like one of the great like great jazz band leaders, like. Who doesn't want to know how Duke Ellington did what he did? Right. Um, that would be just a fascinating, fascinating conversation to hear. Well, to have. I like it. Well, with that being said, um, I think that you guys have a couple of songs back to back that right. actually um, line up with anyone who's tuned in right now from wine country area, Napa, Sonoma, Petaluma. Right. Um, do you want to just say something briefly before we go into those? Sure. The um, so the hometown here on both of these songs is Napa, um, and um, I'll, I'll just go into the first one. The first one is a, a song called "Like a Painting" by Chagall. Um, my wife gave me a print of a painting by Marc Chagall, which is called "Above the Town" (English translation), and it depicts a couple um, floating or flying above a small village. And, um, and that was something that meant a lot to us. We, we pictured and imagined ourselves being in that position, um, much like a song by the um, US Postal Service, um, you know, such great heights. And where we were up there, you know, by ourselves alone, and that's when we were at our best. And, and so we, we saw ourselves in that painting, and that's why it's like a painting um, by Chagall. So, um, as we talked about earlier, the, song, the album is dedicated to, to Debbie, and this is the first track on the, um, on the album. Cheers to Debbie. <laughs> okay. Okay, you ready? Yep. One, two, three. On the streets of the town And stood on the banks Of the ancient canal A bride wearing lace In a church down the lane Was holding her flowers And tending her train She stared from the windows To the churchyard outside Where the people were gathering To wait for the bride up here and beside her and rising above was a dove flying in circles an angel in the halls i 
like a painting by Chagall. No time to spare. He hid in the chapel and sat in a chair. The old man came in with his beads and his robes. It's time to begin, so change into your clothes. He stood on the altar and watched as his bride took her place next to him, and they started to cry. Hands joined together and rising above was a dove flying in circles, an angel in the halls, like a painting by Chagall, like a painting by Chagall. Decided we'll just go right into the, the next song, also about Napa. It takes us back to October 8th, 2017, <clears throat> um, a day I think all of us here will, rem will remember. And um, I was in my backyard in, a, in my home, which is very near Soda Canyon, right at the, the base of Soda Canyon Road, across the Verado Trail. And, um, and in the span of about two hours, we went from a, an idyllic scene to um, a terrifying scene with, uh, as you recall, 70 mile an hour winds and a big ball of fire coming down Soda Canyon Road. Um, and it was absolutely terrifying. Um, but it was a day that, that um, just really changed everything, I think, for man, not just people in Napa, but people in California, um, because um, we really had to reckon with um, climate change after, after that day. And I have to admit that um, <clears throat> after it was all over and we managed to survive, even though I did, we did have to evacuate, um, uh, I thought, well, we're not going to have to deal with this again. We did this. We're not going to have to deal with it again because the last fire in, in Napa Valley was in 1981. So I assume well, it's going to be another 35 or 40 years before that happens again. And, and as you all know now, I was very wrong. So this song is for all of the people whom we know, and there are many who didn't just have to evacuate from homes, but, um, but lost their homes. And, um, and we think about you, um, all of those people, constantly. And I could name them, but I couldn't name all of them because there are too many. <laughs> I don't live inside a mansion filled with 
of rooms with trellises and white horses on the fancy cliffs above the moon, above the sea. I always knew that someday I would leave my house because I would die or I would move. I never knew my little house could soon be me. But I was wrong. And by the dawn we were surrounded by a firefight and the battle lines were drawn. My town is small compared to others where I live like New York City where it glows and never slows unless it snows and clogs the street. I always knew that someday I would leave my town another job or life would know. I never thought my little town could soon be me. But I was wrong. And by the dawn we were surrounded by a firefight and the battle lines were drawn and then our tired minds were strong, and our little town was hunkered down. They tried to save our home. There were drum lines by the river, and the troops were all sent in. And the sky was red and racing down the canyon. There was fire in the wind. But not much more, I grabbed the photos and I loaded 30 years of life into the car. Around our town the fire raged for several days and in the haze no one was phased. Everything downtown was closed except the cars. And then it turned and then I astounded by the morning light Revealing all the scars And then our tired mind was strong Our little town would not break down Though some would lose their homes There were drum lines by the river And the troops were all sent in The sky was red and racing down the canyon And there was fire in the wind Someday I would leave my house Cause I would die or I would move I never knew my little house Could soon be me Thank you This has been Terry Family, everybody Who's tuned in And uh, you guys, you have received Quite a bit of uh, uh, Quite a lot of shout outs uh, You got Becca who just said hey, she loves the sound of resilience and triumph in this one. Um, you've got Wayne from Atlanta checking in. Hey, Wayne. Uh, <laughs> Melanie uh, referencing how beautiful of a song um, you, you just sang, and uh, she's got tears and a smile. And then Greg saying such a beautiful song. Jenny saying the song always gives me chills and just a lot of a lot of love and it, it's really great just um, I think that's one of the things about Napa and wine country and California as a whole is we go through these uh, you know, these crazy times outside of the pandemic um, in addition to the pandemic and we all really do join together for the most part and that is really nice to see uh, in terms of community and resilience and and whatnot. And I think you really did uh, just personify that to another level through this album. So thank you, Jim. Well, thank you, Sam. Um, okay. So I also wanted to hear about, because I know you wrote 
a song about Charlie. And for everyone who's from um, Napa area, if you're familiar with Charlie, Charles the the deli man from Browns ba- Browns Valley Market, you uh, you probably know him. But uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that song? I know you're not singing that song today, but um, I think well, that's one of my Charlie favorites. Charlie was actually not a friend of mine, but um, in my um, office so we have a uh, we had he, she's retired now. A receptionist Melanie, and I think she just made a comment here. Um, she's been a big Terry family fan for for a long time, and um, she uh, she cries at all of our shows. So she's she's the one who gets everybody crying, and. Um, um, but her son is a poet, and he wrote, and he was a friend of the Deli Man, and he, they became friends because her son would go into Browns Valley Market and get a sandwich, you know, on a daily basis for some mm-hmm. period of time, and they became and very good, and that was a good choice, and, um, <laughs> and they became very good friends. And, um, and, the, and he, after Charlie died, <clears throat> as a result of some, um, his struggle with alcohol, an addiction. He, um, uh, Melanie's son, wrote a um, a poem. He's a poet, and he wrote uh, this poem for his friend Charlie, and it was published in the Napa Register. And I I saw that, and I just thought it was just it was just amazing. And that was the inspiration um, for the song about Charlie, the Deli Man, called Deli Man Died. And we really liked that song a lot. And it was a close call for me whether that should go on the on the album or not. But <clears throat> it could easily have been there. No question. It's a good one. And I feel like um, y- you guys have performed in the Wine and Music Studio and then also at the Blue Note in Napa. Um, right. And so I'm sure if there are Napa people tuned in, they have they have seen you in, in one form or another. And um, I think it was spring and fall of 2019 you were at the Blue Note. Right performing and then um remind me what and then part in Mar- and er- earlier in 2019 where we were at jam sellers music studio and then um a year later we were there as well okay yeah because i think i definitely i poured you some some wine i have a heavy see, pour so see I, was, <laughs> see I was drinking wine back then yep there's the proof there you go next <laughs> month next month <laughs> you know people always ask me how much how much is the most that you've ever spent on a bottle of wine and i go oh, i don't know usually about 15 minutes <laughs> so uh, that's that that's <laughs> comes out of nowhere yeah there it is <laughs> so anyone watching that wants to partake so jim's partaking in in dry january right now but if you are not you can take a sip for him. But I told Please. him he's going to have to take a sip on February 1st for each joke. Um, and if you if you need to replenish your sips, uh, go ahead and venture over to jamsellers.com slash buy. You can find our wines to be delivered to your doorstep via our website. Um, in addition to that, you can use our wine finder and uh, use your zip code to find wines um, that we, uh, you know, that we sell within your area. Um, whether it be a liquor mart, I know it's crazy outside of California, we have these States that you have to go to a certain store to buy wine or alcohol, which I always forget Yeah, on a certain and day sometimes so too. <laughs> yeah. Like Sundays, I think it's Utah and maybe uh, one or two other States where you cannot buy any form of alcohol on, uh, on Sundays, which like that's the day that most people in california do purchase <laughs> their alcohol <laughs> as they're exiting the weekend yeah. <laughs> um okay so jim i have a question for you okay if you could choose between these two options which would it be if you could either be a lyrical genius and like never have writer's block ever again or the other option is you could sing any song ever created, whether it be your own or someone else's, at the perfect pitch. Like you are just the musical maestro when it comes to pitch and tune 
um, which would you prefer? Well, <clears throat> um, I think I would prefer the um, being able to sing any song, um, you know, perfectly on pitch, because the other choice of the being the, the great lyricist who never has writer's block, I think is, um, I, I think that's just so unnatural that could, that just couldn't exist. You, you need to have that writer's block and just have patience with it because it somehow, it's like sleep. Somehow it fuels your creativity <laughs> for the next time around. Yeah. Uh, I, re I really believe that, and that's the way I get through writer's block. Rather than panicking about it, I, um, I think of it in that way, and I, I like that. It and if you were me. the greatest singer in the world, you, you'd always remember your lyrics, too. That's true. So that would be good. <laughs> yeah. That's you'd true. Never blow it on the lyrics. How does the, the songwriting normally happen for you, Jim? Does it normally start with the melody and then kind of translate itself into lyrics that come naturally or is it the opposite no it's definitely that um, i start with the melody or something on the guitar or a piano or something you know triggers some melody and if i'm lucky at the very same time that that's happening some words will will come to mind that you know that really fit and it's maybe words that about some, some you know about something i've been thinking uh, you know, and or that's affecting me. You know, like January sixth, or some, for example, and um, and then it all sort of comes out. But it's definitely the music side that drives it. Then the lyrics sometimes coinciding, and that's that's the way it works for me. Um, it's very difficult for me to take good words and um, and you know, just write words without having that frame of music around it. I I, I can't do that, <laughs> and some people do very well. Well, and obviously, like, with different times, like, if you're going through a hard time or you're going through a really great time, things are going to come out a little bit differently. Um, with that being said, I know sometimes all we need is m a little bit of mercy in the storm. <laughs> okay. What do you think, Jim? <laughs> you're going to have to take another <laughs> sip for that on February 1st. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our segue. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the hometown here is a, a, a lake um, outside of um, West Palm Beach in Florida um, called Lake Okeechobee. Um, the other hometown in the same song is New Orleans. And, um, but before I get into that, I wanted to do a shout out here, but it's appropriate because um, you'll see why. The, um, I go to a songwriting retreat every, um, um, every summer. Um, now it's being done digitally, um, and that's held by Dar Williams. It's called Writing a Song That Matters, and, it's, and she ha does that in the Hudson Valley, where, which is where she lives. Um, and um, it's been extremely influential to me. So if anybody, and I didn't, when you asked about, you know, the, the artist um, whom you'd like to talk to for an hour, um, I, you know, I didn't mention her. I said Josh Ritter, um, but that wasn't to leave her off the list because I have had that opportunity to talk with her a lot. And um, it's been very worthwhile. So people should keep that in mind if you want some inspiration for songwriting. And in the Hudson Valley, you know, one thing that she does is take us to uh, like a little, you know, um, uh, lot like you're in grammar school, take us on a field trip and <laughs> to a museum or something because art can be so stimulating to a songwriter. And um, she took us one time to the Storm King Art Center in the Hudson Valley, which is very different than most museums because it's 500 acres it's all outside, and the, and the pieces of art are as big as your house, you know, if not bigger. It's just staggering. Um, and, and when I went there um, I, with a friend, I went um, uh, down by a lake, and in the, in the middle of that lake was a stack of um, tambourines that was 35, 40 feet tall um, and painted white. And that was a, a piece of art that was... Um, being exhibited there by a, a woman named Allison Janae Hamilton, who's a young artist in New York. And um, the purpose of it was to commemorate the lives of 5,000 migrant, black migrant farm workers um, who died in the great storm of Lake Okeechobee, you know, in Florida in 1928. And it was the second deadliest um, storm in, in history, and very few people know about it. Um, and uh, so, and then I started thinking, well, let's go 77 yards, 77 years in the future, and um, that's 2005 and Katrina, and basically the same thing happened in Katrina, 
that happened um, in Okeechobee 77 years before. And the point of the sculpture was to amplify the disproportionate impact of um, storms and, and environmental disasters on people of color. Um, so I decided then, so I think it's the only time I decided right then that I was going to write a song about this subject because it combined um, systemic racism, climate change, and the role of folk music because those tambourines represented um, the role of folk music in building resilience in a, um, in a oppressed culture. So that's, and that's why I wrote the song. Well, here's looking to 2021 um, as a better year where we all have hopefully grown and um, show a lot more empathy and sympathy towards one another. Cheers to that. <laughs> Mercy in the Storm. Hear the baby crying for his mama. Mama's gone, there's panic in the water of the place. There's a black cloud coming like a freight train. Dark as spit, there's terror in the hammer of the rain. And the levee walls are bending with a vengeance. The water in Lake Okeechobee's rising high. And the tambourines are ringing like a Sunday morning choir. And the people cry for sea and storm. Cordwood thrown in the bottom of a hole. There's a white man sleeping in a pine box. Creature laying flowers at the blessing of his soul. And the levee walls are bending with a vengeance. And the water in Lake Okeechobee's rising high. And the tambourines are ringing like a Sunday morning fly. Oh, 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 oh. 
Thank yeah. you, Jim. And thank you, Clark. And thank you, Graham. Um, Jim, by the way, uh, we've got Beth and Greg Cole watching. Oh, and they great. say they're uh, friends of your sister. Yeah. Yeah. That's my sister. So. Friends they, of mine, too, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, And they're so, good, good Terry Family Band fans, for sure. Well, they're shouting you out, and they are enjoying the show. So, <laughs> Shout out to the two of them. They're actually my old uh, neighbors, and their daughter is, like, one of my best friends. So shout out to Sophia. All right. Um, okay, so we just listened to mercy in the storm and um wow katrina 2005 that's crazy to think back to because i can remember exactly where i was when i heard about it um and i think that it's important to think back to to hard times like that and to what we've already been been going through and to take that as uh, more of a reason for us to basically become better people and to figure out how we can ensure that like the human race like everyone um you know just can continue to thrive and push forward through these hard times and i think that um this album as a whole you just really have encapsulated the all all of the struggles especially in california and wine country um in addition to equality and um, issues involving racism and and just systemic oppression that need to be addressed. And I think oh, it's just, it's beautiful. So thank you. Well, thank you, Sam. I think you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're, we're approaching the official West Coast Happy Hour. We're about seven minutes out from five o'clock. Why don't we do the last two songs just back to back, if that's cool with you. We can do a little intermission in between or however you want to do it. Um, Sure. Uh, Just real quick then. Let's do the song Take Your Gun Away. That there, the hometown is um, is Las Vegas, the scene of the Las Vegas shooting in 2018. And it was... Roseanne Cash, who wrote an op-ed in the New York Times and said all of us little root singers out there need to stand up and, and speak your mind, and that's what we did. A one, two, three. Little 
better than a man. And we bow our heads, cry our tears, raise our hands, take a stand, shrug, and then we do it all again. Lock him in a closet, throw away the key, take him to the mound to shoot him at a goddamn tree. Think about it, mister, do you really need an AR-15 gun in your backseat? And then we do it all again And we bow our heads Cry our tears, raise our hands Take a stand, shrug And then we do it all again And we bow our heads Cry our tears, raise our hands Take a stand, shrug And then we do it all again Yeah, let's do it. We should probably jump on that then. <clears throat> um, this one's not on the album. Not a big story behind it. Just some dude, some dude riding his bike, you know, on the California coast. And during his bike ride, he he has a an experience that jolts him into a realization that he's the problem in the relationship with his significant other. And that's the story. It's called the state I'm in. Hey. It's early and the morning sun is in my eyes The lovely one I look across the bed And you're still sleeping so yeah, we had a little fight We held each other through the night Somehow I resent the way you're breathing My head is down, I'm riding with the wind It's nothing that you said or did, babe It's just the state I'm in Riding out on Highway 1 It's a lucky day if we can ever See the sun, the fall May never clear That's how it seems I'm rolling by the ocean Seagulls and dunes Ruminating, syncopating Running out of tunes My iPhone's playing the California dream My head is down I'm riding Nothing that you said or did, babe It's just the state I'm in And lately I feel lost, babe And maybe Our hearts are breaking down. Helpless when you cry You're selfless when you try Just rode right by, he's bleeding And that's okay, cause it's not a race But now his ass is in my face I'd rather it be your rear end I'm seeing My head is high, I'm riding with the wind It's nothing that you said or did me It's just the It's 
everything I said and did, babe, and that's the state. Thank you to everybody who's tuned in today for Terry Family on Jam Happy Hour. Um, appreciate you guys so much, and I can't wait to have you guys back in the tasting room. Wonderful. That'd be great. Live in person music. That'd be nice. We'll get there. We'll get there. Lot, we'll Sam. get there really, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> really nice talking to you, too, Sam. You're, you're good at your job. Thank well, you. Well, I appreciate that, and the three of you are absolutely phenomenal, and um, I don't know how many drinks you're going to have to take, Jim. Uh, in February, but February first is going to be a big up with day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.